Remember those Anim Trails Cascade had? I mean, if you're new, probably not, but those of us who worked with Cascade know about those good Anim Trails. Stick the Notify on, give it two sockets and a particle system, and you're done. Well, there's no such default setup in Niagara, and while I've seen a few people come close, I haven't seen anyone explain how to actually do it as well as Cascade did. But I figured it out! So, Leaf Branch Games made an excellent tutorial that pushed me in the right direction for this, and I don't think I would have figured this out without building on his method. But I want those good Anim Trails. Anim Trails that are identical to the Cascade ones, but in Niagara. Take two sockets and automatically scale for the distance in between. So, here we go. I'm using 427, but 426 or even 5 should work. Choose the third person template, name it Anim Trails or something, and boot it up. Let's start with the Niagara setup. Make an empty system and name it Anim Trails. Open it up and add an empty emitter. Delete the sprite renderer, add a ribbon renderer. Add a material to the renderer. I'm using one that looks like this. Our ribbon UVs go from left to right, so I'm using texture coordinates to get a nice gradient, and then you can like multiply it by a mask if you want. Particle color up here is a default node that automatically reads the color from our particle emitter. Also in the ribbon renderer, set the facing mode to custom side vector. If you don't do this, the ribbon renderer will always try to face the camera, which is not really what we want, obviously. Now for the magic. Make a new Niagara module script. Open it up and add two vector inputs. Name one start socket and the other one end socket. On the map set node I made for you, add the pre-existing parameters ribbon facing, position, and ribbon width. Make sure to choose the ones tagged with particles. Now the idea here is that we're going to calculate these and update them every frame based on our socket locations. And the good news is calculating them is really easy. Just grab off of start socket and type find midpoint between positions, which literally just calculates all three of these things for us. So plug position into position, length into ribbon width, and direction to V1 into ribbon facing. The weight value for these is the location between the vectors. We just want to leave this at 0.5. A value of zero would just return our start socket as the position, while a value of one would just return the end socket as the position. We want the ribbon to be halfway in between, so just 0.5. Now if you go back into your system, you won't be able to add your module. That's because we need to tell Unreal that we want to be able to actually add it to things. So we need to set library visibility to exposed, and I'd recommend also ticking suggested as well. Back in the Anim Trail system, now you can add your new module under particle spawn. There are a few more things we need to do for this emitter. Delete initialized particle and add initialized ribbon in its place. Set the lifetime to something low like 0.5 or 0.2. See the color? That's what our material that we made will be rendering. I'm just going to leave this white, but you can make it something snazzy like orange or purple or something. Under emitter update, add spawn per frame, which as I'm writing this is marked as experimental. Don't worry about that, just dismiss it. A spawn count of one is fine. There's no reason to do anything more than that, to be honest. The last thing we have to do in here is set up our socket parameters. We will come back later and make it pretty though. Click on your custom module. Recognize these? Click the drop downs and type new user parameter. It automatically named mine, but make sure yours are named start socket and end socket. Now we need to make our custom anim notify. Back in the content browser, right mouse and choose new blueprint class. Expand the all classes drop down and search for anim notify state underscore timed Niagara effect. Make one of those. Name it Niagara anim trails. Open it up. Under class default, set the template to your system. We have to give it a socket name, otherwise it won't spawn. I'm just going to put root in here, all lowercase. These are the default values for your class that will appear when you add this notify in the animation editor. We're just doing this so we don't have to fill it in every time. On the left, hover over the functions and you'll see this little override dropdown. Choose received notify tick. This will make a function that fires every frame while the notify is active, with a handy little reference to our mesh component. Right click and type get spawned effect. Plug mesh comp into mesh comp. The return value is an instance of our anim trails effect. Since this is a tick function, best practice would be to pull off and make sure that the trails are valid. Off of not valid, we can just return false, uh, but I'm gonna also stick a print string here while we're testing, just to let us know if this system is failing to spawn. Off of is valid, we're going to set a vector parameter twice and return true. Guess what the parameter names are? Start socket and end socket. For the actual vector values, drag off of mesh comp and do get socket location. Put in one for each vector parameter we want to set. Right click on the in socket bone name for each of those and choose promote to variable. Name the one that's for start socket, start socket, and the one that's for end socket, end socket. Click these little buttons next to each of them and make them instance editable, which will make them appear when we place the anim notify into the animation. 
And that's pretty much the whole setup. Choose an animation you want to have trails on, add the anim notify, and provide it with the bone socket names you want the trails to appear between. It will automatically scale for them. You can also set up special sockets for things like swords. One issue, it looks like a not great, it, it looks bad. A few polished things. We want the trail to fade off and decrease in size as it ages. So add a scale color module to the particle update, click that little drop down next to the alpha and choose float from curve. This gives us a graph of our trail's opacity as it ages. Left is I just spawned, and right is I'm as old as my lifetime. If you're in 427 or later, it probably automatically gave you a line from 1 to 0, which is perfect, but you know, play around with it, see what different effects you can get. To make the ribbon renderer smaller as it ages, add a scale ribbon width module and do the same thing, float from curve. Now it looks pretty. One thing to keep in mind is that with anim trails, often less is more. Keep those anim notifies tight, and I'd recommend keeping the lifetime a bit lower as well. Also, good animations with clean arcs help immensely. This attack animation I made has some issues with the hand positioning, so there's a bit of a dip in the anim trail that wouldn't be there if I took more time to polish the arc. Thanks for watching! I hope you found this helpful! If you need help or just want a place to hang out and dev, you can join my Discord. You can also pick up the source files on Gumroad. They cost a little bit, but I've added some pretty materials, masks, and different effect presets.